Welcome to HiQ, the most advanced tennis court irrigation system of its kind. The purpose of this video series is to present information that will help you understand and operate your HiQ court. Topics covered will include information on how your court is constructed and how it works, steps for starting up and for winterizing your court, directions for managing the water levels, techniques for managing the court surface. The principle of subsurface irrigation is simple. Water is introduced into the porous stone base of your court where gravity distributes it in an even layer below the playing surface. Capillary action draws water up to the playing surface where it evaporates. The goal of subsurface irrigation is to maintain just enough water in the court to keep up with evaporation rates, resulting in a surface that is firm, stable, and has uniform traction. HiQ is a system that allows you to deliver, distribute, and precisely maintain the water level in your court. HiQ courts are designed to simplify the watering and monitoring process by automatically maintaining the water levels you set based on court observations and playing preferences. To effectively manage your HiQ court, it's important to have a strong understanding of how it was built. The HiQ court consists of six 20 foot by 60 foot cell liners with the sides formed up to contain the court material, hold water, and maintain separation between the cells. The court is constructed on a subgrade that is sloped end to end or side to side on a true plane of one inch and 30 feet. Inside each cell, a network of pipe and cue mats are installed for optimal water distribution. Then the cells are filled with four inches of base material and one inch of hydroblend. The long side of the cells are always perpendicular to the slope direction. The entire court is contained using a brick curb or some other form of perimeter edging to contain the base and surface layers. The control center is installed on a pad on the low side of the court and is programmed to distribute water through a network of pipes that serves each cell separately. Now that you have a strong understanding of how the court was built, we will discuss the control center where water levels are managed. The control center consists of an aluminum box that houses the mechanical elements used to deliver and maintain water for your court, and in a separate housing above the box, a digital control panel that allows you to set and monitor the water levels. Inside of the box, you'll find solenoid valves, flow meters, and water reservoirs with water flow sensors and overflow pipes. Depending on which HiQ box you have, you may find some of the following elements inside or outside of the box. The ball valve, water pressure regulator, water hammer arrestor, and water pressure gauge. The ball valve is necessary to isolate the HiQ box from the main water supply. The water hammer arrestor protects the HiQ box assembly from water pressure spikes. The water pressure regulator allows us to regulate the amount of water pressure entering the HiQ system. The water pressure gauge allows us to monitor the water pressure. The solenoid valve is hardwired to the HiQ control panel where it is open and closed electronically, allowing the water to flow to the court and back to the reservoir. Each solenoid valve works in concert with the corresponding water level sensors. The flow meter measures the amount of water going into your tennis court and provides readings to the control panel. The water reservoir provides a visual reference for the amount of water in your tennis court. It houses a sensor that provides readings to the control panel, an overflow pipe that drains away excess water. The HiQ control panel is where the water level set points are stored, adjusted, and monitored. It is wired to the water sensor, the solenoid valve, and the flow meter for each cell. Review and complete the punch list to prepare the system's mechanicals before introducing water to the control box. Then we'll do an initial flush of the system. Feel free to pause the video here to review your punch list. Ensure drain valve and high cue box is closed. Overflow pipes are inserted. Water level sensors are in place. Ensure all wires and tubes are connected. The valve flow controls should be open. Solenoid should be closed. Test power to the control panel. 
Next, we want to open the ball valve and allow water into the box and verify there are no leaks. Verify the water pressure gauge is reading 20 to 30 PSI. If adjustments are needed, you can turn the bolt on top of the regulator clockwise to increase the pressure and counterclockwise to lower the pressure. We want to flush the HiQ system before setting it to run automatically. The HiQ control panel should be switched to the off position. Remove the water level sensor and overflow tube from the first cell. Open the solenoid valve. We want to begin the initial system flush one cell at a time by sending water out to each of the six HiQ cell reservoirs. Flushing out any debris that may be in the reservoirs or pipes. Water will flow into the reservoir, out to the cell, and into the drain port simultaneously. Let the zone flush for about two minutes. Close the solenoid valve. Allow the reservoir to drain for one minute. Replace the overflow tube. Open the solenoid again until there is three inches of water in the reservoir. Once there is three inches of water in the reservoir, close the solenoid again. Replace the sensor. Repeat this process for the remaining five zones. Now you are ready to set the water level set points for each zone. Archer recommends set points for the first time you start up your system, which can be referenced in your owner's manual. To adjust your water level, first select the cell you wish to adjust using the square button above the water level readout. The selected cell will illuminate. Press the button repeatedly to move from one cell to the next. Next, observe water level and set points for the selected cell. Use the up and down arrows to adjust the set point. As soon as you increase the water level set point, the control panel opens the valve for that specific zone. Water will flow out to your court and back to your reservoir, causing the water level inside the reservoir to rise. When the water level reaches the new set point, the control panel turns the valve off and water stops flowing into that zone. As you increase set points, it's normal for the water level in the reservoir to rise rapidly and exceed the set point substantially before the valve closes. The excess water will slowly balance out as the water spreads throughout the cell. On and off cycles are a steady occurrence and part of the normal operation as the system replaces water that is evaporating throughout the day. Now that your system is up and running, here's what you can expect next. You'll see evidence of each cell filling with water within 20 minutes as two stripes start to form down your cell. These stripes will slowly start to lengthen and expand side to side. It could take as long as 24 hours for your cell to fill completely. If after 20 minutes your cord is not showing signs of water, increase your water levels by one to two tenths of an inch. Otherwise, leave the settings where they are and give the cord time to respond. If you see a cell that's not fully balanced and showing dry areas, increase your water level by one to two tenths of an inch and allow time for the cell to fill. Please note that upon the initial fill, it's normal for a court to be a little soft. Your court should be monitored hourly each day for the first week to ascertain whether your water levels are sufficient. After that, a daily check will be needed to confirm that the set point, water level, and actual amount of water in the reservoir are all closely correlated. They won't always be exactly the same, but should be very closely correlated. Also ensure that the court surface is uniformly wet and stable. Make adjustments within one to two tenths of an inch as necessary if the court starts to dry out or if the surface gets too wet. Monitor and adjust your court to meet your desired playing conditions. If it is necessary to close your court for the winter, follow these steps. Turn the system off. Remove sensors from the reservoirs. Sensors must be protected from freezing water. Pull the overflow tubes. Open the drain valve. Close the Haiku box lid. One of the greatest advantages of a Haiq quarter is the Haiq app that allows you to manage your courts from anywhere in the world. Before you get started, refer to your owner's manual for connecting the control board to a local Wi-Fi network. Download the HiQ Tennis app from the iOS App Store. Once you've connected your HiQ system to Wi-Fi, you can start using the app. 
You will need to create a group in the system, even if you're only adding one court. You can name the group after your club, facility, a landmark, or anything else. Once the group is created, select that group in the My Court Groups tab, which should already be on your home screen. Next, add courts to the group. Again, you can name the court whatever you want, but you will need to type in the serial number and court access code where prompted. That information can be found on the outside of the control panel. Once connected, you will see the court in your court group where you can observe everything that is happening with your new HiQ irrigation system. To adjust the water level, select the cell and tap the set point number highlighted in turquoise. You can manually type in the new desired water level and click the check mark to set it. Within 30 seconds, your irrigation system will adjust to feed more water into the court or allow the drains to open to reduce the water level in the cell, depending on what adjustment you made.